De Gea signs on, Champions League football is back, Messi returns, club circle for Fraser and the transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host Matt Frodick, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First off and to David De Gea who has finally signed a new contract to Manchester United until 2023. This means that if he actually sees his contract out, he would have been at the club for 12 years. Since joining in 2011, he's played over 300 games for Manchester United that amid speculation that he was going to move to Real Madrid literally every single transfer window. He was super close to moving back in 2015, but the paperwork wasn't done in time, so he stayed at Old Trafford. In the past few seasons, Real Madrid have signed Thibaut Courtois, meaning that David De Gea really isn't actually needed at the Bernabeu. This also leads me into thinking that that's the whole reason why he signed a new deal with Manchester United. It's obvious he hasn't been happy at the club a few times, but it looks at the moment that he's finally realised he's not really going to get a move anywhere else. All the big clubs around Europe have a fantastic goalkeeper already in place so it looks like with Real Madrid having Courtois and bringing in Alphonse Areola there isn't really a place for him so he might as well stay put of course we'll be hoping that Manchester United get back to the Champions League because that's where all top goalkeepers want to play but I just don't think he can claim to be one of the top maybe even top five in the world just at the moment don't get me wrong he's still an unbelievable goalkeeper and I think he really really is up there just maybe not up there with the best the other school of thought alongside this is that Manchester United do actually still want to sell him, but by getting him to sign a new contract, it means they can sell him for a fair amount of money next summer, rather than losing him on a free, but that's pretty obvious for any club. But mentioning the Champions League, and finally, finally, it is back. Well, the group stages are starting tonight. Anyway, sorry for those of you who have watched the qualifiers. Since Divock Origi banged in the second goal for Liverpool in the final a few months ago, they are starting that campaign tonight against Napoli. It'll be a tough trip to the Italian side, with Carlo Ancelotti in charge but Jurgen Klopp will be hoping to get his title defence off to a very good start as they chase a third consecutive final and to become only the second team since 1990 to win the competition back to back of course Real Madrid have been doing that a few years ago the other games in tonight's fixtures sees Chelsea's group kick off as Frank Lampard goes from being a Champions League legend to being in the Champions League dugout as Chelsea hosts Valencia elsewhere in that group as well there's also Lille against Ajax Ajax without Frankie de Jong and Matthias Ligt who will be hoping to have a repeat of last season's sensational run, but this time making it one step further to the final. Alongside this, there's also Inter Milan and Leipzig, who get their campaigns off to a start tonight against Slavia, Prague and Benfica, respectively. Now, a lot of people have mentioned Leipzig and Inter Milan as potential dark horses for the competition. I can't see them winning it, but I can see them causing an upset or two, so they'll be hoping to get off to a good start. But the main game of tonight is at the Westfalen Stadion in Germany as Dortmund hosts Barcelona. This is a Barcelona side who haven't started the season so well compared to Dortmund who sit in second position but they do have one key player back tonight and that is Lionel Messi Having last played a match for Argentina all the way back in July in the Copa America, he has missed the start of the season due to a calf injury. But finally, having trained on Monday, Messi is back in the squad. And what he's returned to is the fact that 16-year-old Ansu Fati is making all of the headlines. With two goals and assists in 116 minutes of La Liga football, I'm pretty sure he'll be getting his Champions League debut tonight, although it may be off the bench. When Messi's fitting in the squad, he definitely, definitely starts. Although Ernesto Valverde has been known to make a rather odd decision or two, in his time at the new Camp. As for the result of the game, well, I can see Dortmund actually putting on a pretty strong performance, especially at home, and it could shock Barcelona, but I think they might, might just edge it, especially considering that Messi will be back, so I'm going to go for 2-1. But away for the Champions League for a minute, and Arsenal are one of the teams who are circling around Bournemouth's Ryan Fraser. Now, you may be thinking, Ryan Fraser, is he really that big of news? Yes, he is. One of the top assisters in the Premier League last season with 14 assists, and one of the best in Europe. Europe, in fact, only behind the likes of Sancho, Messi and Hazard. He started well this season as Bournemouth have started pretty well and was instrumental in their 3-1 victory over Everton. But his contract is expiring at the end of the season and the Scotsman has attracted a lot of interest, especially from the Emirates, in the last year or so. Apparently a £35 million move was on the cards this summer and Fraser himself did admit that it's really nice to be linked with such big clubs, but at the moment he is a Bournemouth player. It looks like he will be signing a new deal, much like with David De Gea, if he really wants to leave that will see him promised for an offer to be accepted next summer should one come in. 
Otherwise, he'll be stuck at Bournemouth or he'll be leaving on a free, which the club definitely, definitely do not want. So lastly, but not least, we come to a quick roundup of the transfers and other news from the rest of the footballing world. And first up, Bernard Arnold, actually the second richest man in the world, is considering buying AC Milan for around 900 million euros. Elsewhere, and with talking of players who are contract expiring at the end of the season, Nemanja Matic is, is at Old Trafford, and he's interesting the likes of Inter Milan, Juventus and Borussia Dortmund. Although the last thing you've Ventus need is another slow-turning central midfielder. Elsewhere, and Victor Wanyama's loan deal to Celtic, which didn't quite go through in August, could still be on in January. And last but not least, the absolute bullshit rumour of the day is that Manchester United will be signing Jaden Sancho and James Madison next summer. I just can't see that happening. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts on all of today's daily news and the fact that the Champions League is back. Whilst you're at it, you can also smash the like button and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I will see you guys later.